Hey traders, checking in on the stock market today. Red day out there today with the higher risk names selling off a little bit more significantly following suit with the cryptocurrency space. We have double tops on all of our major sectors that we need to be keeping an eye on and natural gas bulls are ripping to the upside. Let's look at the charts. So this morning was a morning where I focused more on the futures charts than I do on SPY and QQQ themselves. And that's just because we hit new levels overnight that were not hit the previous day in both of those names. So there's more information to have on the futures chart. And as we were heading into the open, I can see that we had already been bouncing for a few hours and we were watching for an hourly lower high to potentially be set. We then saw the bell ring, heard the bell ring, neither. We pulled back, set a low of the day, tried to change the trend by breaking resistance and we failed to do so. And that's when bears gained confidence and took back over with a drop to the low of the day. So a failed hourly trend change on the futures chart. And again, on SPY, you would have to be looking at extended hours to have that information. So important to be looking at the futures chart. So we ended up dropping pretty hard. And what marked the bottom here? So here's our bounce, five minute lower high, held support, and then bulls took off. And something happened at 12.01 and 15 seconds. And we're gonna zoom into the 15 second chart to show exactly what it was. So here's that five minute bounce. And at 12.15, make that 12.01 and 15 seconds, there was a big market buy. And you can see the result of that, just a big 15 second candle, probably the biggest 15 second candle for the bulls of the entire day. So what was going on there? Obviously market order, because you're not going to have a huge candle unless it's a market order that takes out all the asks up to a certain level. And in this instance, this was a, a 60 cent candle in 15 seconds. So not only that, and this is where having a bunch of eyes on the market helps because we could very quickly see this happened everywhere because someone mentioned it on NVDA in the chat room. Then someone mentioned, well, it's on SPY 2 and this and this and this. And if you go and look at any major name at 12.01 in 15 seconds, they had this volume spike. So what was going on there? I can't say, you know, you'll have salty bears talking about manipulation and maybe it was Powell hitting the buy button across the market. Whatever the reason is, that matters the least amount to me. It was just a very clear signal because from that point forward, and let's just go to the one minute time frame now, from 12.01 onward, it was the very clear shift in momentum that was marked from that point. So how can we use that information? Well, number one, we can just observe it and say, okay, well, next time I see something like that, I'm going to act on it. But how would we act on it? We would see that signal and hop in bullish right away and just stick your stop right nearby. So there won't be a ton of risk as far as acting on that. And we had a 15 second equilibrium that formed in response to that big market order and it eventually broke bull. So you could be watching that for just confirmation. So, so you're making sure it's not just a fluke, but a high, high or low, low or high, high or low. So you, you hear me say equilibriums happen on all time frames. Well, there's your volatility spike and there's a 15 second equilibrium that then broke bull. So you can act on it and it can also help you from looking in the wrong direction. So just as an example, that volume spike happened across the market and we were keeping an eye on Netflix bearish today to be looking for daily consolidation to begin and still hasn't convincingly shaped up for daily consolidation. But at that point we had broken 600 support and someone was asking me about entering bearish on a five minute lower high. And they asked right around here. And my response was, you know, maybe we want to be a bit cautious and use a longer term time frame because very clearly, whatever that volume spike was, has shifted short term momentum for bounce follow through. So not only could it be a signal to potentially act on, but it could be a signal to prevent us from acting in the wrong direction. And even if we don't make money on it, it can perhaps save us money. So nice little signal there on SPY. As far as the daily chart for SPY, still no major red flags. We're holding daily EMA 12. Anything above 446.16 is a daily high or low. So the uptrend is still intact. The bulls will have to prove it with an hourly trend change back in their favor. And again, we can just go right back to the futures chart and watch this tonight to see if the bulls were able to shape up an inverse head and shoulders, which would look like this overnight if the bulls can pull that off. But SPY needs to set a daily high or low here. And again, we're just cautious because there's double tops everywhere. And right now, just looking at QQQ, 
Again, double top at the all-time high, but bears aren't proving a whole lot at this point. We did break a short-term daily support level. Obviously, it didn't last very long. But again, when we have all these double tops, and I'm talking QQQ and XLF has a double top at the all-time high with a more significant pullback, XLV has a double top at the all-time high with a less significant pullback. Again, it's just enough to be watching, just paying attention. XLF is the only name that has significantly pulled back from its double top. QQQ and XLV are still right there. So who knows, maybe in two or three days from now, we look at that and say, well, daily higher lows formed and bulls continue to march on and break their double tops. But again, we're just watching now. Can the bears follow through? And they were trying to follow through today, but again, 12.01 in 15 seconds, it was like the seasons changed and it was a very notable shift. So XLV daily inside bar. If it breaks bull, we have a new higher low set and we're gonna be looking right back at that all time high. If it breaks bear, we're looking down at key support of 133.97. And if that were to break, that double top becomes a lot more serious. And as far as XL, or I should say QQQ, at this point, we would have to lose daily EMA 12 for the double top to be serious. But significant dip buying on the Qs. And same thing as SPY, the bulls will have to confirm the hourly trend change for bounce follow through. So in yesterday's video, we talked about how cryptocurrencies were potentially showing us you know, risk on selling. So usually crypto showing strength shows a risk on environment. And IWM is that version for the stock market, risk on. It's the smaller companies. It's the higher risk, high reward companies. We gapped down and saw a big red day today. It was clearly, at least as far as what I'm watching on my screen, it was the weakest of the major sectors that we keep an eye on. So could it just be a coincidence? Sure, that's possible. But in my opinion, we see the highest risk stocks selling off after the highest risk asset sells off notably the day before. So IWM is now seeing weekly consolidation underway, unable to break the all-time high at the moment. And again, that is a wall. There is a lot of price action. How many times have we rejected right around this area? And just the amount of daily candles between 233 and 234 is significant. So we were heading up to that level and we've set a lower high compared to it. And if the bulls are gonna break that all-time high and confirm a monthly bull flag, we have to set a weekly higher low and then follow through and break those levels. And if we pull back notably from here, then we're going to have to be watching for the potential that we just continue chopping around sideways within this monthly range. Look at this one monthly candle back in March. We've been trading pretty much within that range and pretty much is the wrong word. We've been trading within that range for six months at this point, five, five months and one week. So that is the range. And the last thing the bulls want to see is staying range bound within that. They definitely want to take out resistance for a clear higher high. So that's something we're going to continue watching for, but the bulls have to set a weekly higher low at this point as the pullback the last few days has lost the daily uptrend. Biotech sector, daily EMA 12 support test, hourly RSI got oversold this morning, solid bounce from hourly oversold conditions, a couple percent bounce. And again, the bulls have to confirm an hourly trend change back in their favor for a daily higher low to be set. And if that's the case, it will be very healthy consolidation. And again, retracement as our guide, is it healthy? Is it a bull flag? We're not even close to the 382 retracement. It's still a possible bull flag, especially if that daily EMA 12 support continues to hold. So we'll see if the bulls are able to change the hourly trend back in their favor. Keeping in mind, we do have IWM correlation here. Three days of consolidation. IWM, three days of consolidation. So definitely worth watching IWM if you're trading XBI. Semiconductors, daily downtrend confirmed today. A lack of follow through at the moment with some lower wicks, but it's a higher low, failure to break resistant and a break of support. And NVDA did the same thing. Lower high and lower low. So that means weekly consolidation is underway, but we know if we confirm a daily downtrend and don't see any bear follow through, it means zoom out and scout a potential bull flag. So semiconductors like SMH and NVDA are potential bull flags at this point. And what would negate the bull flag? It would be increasing bear volume and bear follow through on this new downtrend. We're in a daily downtrend at this point. It's just a daily downtrend that doesn't have any follow through for the bears at this point.
So keeping an eye on the semiconductors to see if they can shape up weekly bull flags. AMD is a little bit different and it's a weekly tightening range. We have the all time high on the breakout, weekly high or low, weekly lower high is now set. So bulls are watching for a potential playoff 101.98 to try for a weekly high or low and equilibrium. And it's been weaker than NVDA. We can see we've been consolidating for essentially six days at this point. And we were more sideways in our stronger names with today really being the first day of a notable drop. Hourly trend change back to the bulls needed across the board. Tomorrow, if we're going to look at today and say, ah, no big deal, bulls are still in complete control. If we keep these hourly downtrends, break the lows of today tomorrow, these double tops across the board are going to continue standing out significantly to us. Checking in on the Chinese names, Baba failed to break resistance yesterday. And if we drop down and break 168.88, we lose the daily uptrend. We have our high of the bounce, higher low, higher high, higher low, lower high. And that would be a bear break, which would then have us zooming out and watching for the potential of a weekly bear flag. This is still a possible weekly bear flag at this point. This bounce is not significant enough to try and negate that. So key support test in the short term, and that's going to give the bears some confidence. We've been watching our other names, which are stronger. K-Web, daily support is approaching of 52.05. Baidu has not set a daily high or low since back at 150.16. But these bounces are more significant than the BABA bounce at this point, as far as the amount of retracement that we've seen. Just looking at K-Web, from the last weekly bounce attempt. And retracements are a great way to compare individual names. But I can see that we bounced about 40, 45% retracement. And if I'm looking at BABA on the weekly time frame, the last weekly bounce for me, the last clear one, we had some very weak attempts, but it was back here. And that bounce retracement is more like 30%. So a very big difference between those names. And again, BABA is a lead bear out of the grouping. So worth watching the entire grouping. But if I'm looking bearish, I'm looking at BABA. If I'm looking bullish, I'm looking at some of those other names. SPRT, so we were looking for the bounce from yesterday's video and watching for the potential of a bottom fishing play off the low of yesterday. And we only got within 5% of that low of yesterday. But this is an extremely volatile name, which moves 5 to 30% very easily. So this is the kind of name where you have to use a smaller position size. You know, I can't risk 5% on my normal position sizes. My normal risk is 0.5, maybe 1% at most on those position sizes. So again, if you're trading something that's more volatile or less volatile, your position sizing adjusts to account for that. You know, I would never be in a full position on something that moves 5% so easily. And if something's moving very slow, if I'm trading SPY, which is a lot slower than NIO or Tesla, I'm gonna be using a larger position size to make up for that. So first day today holding the low of the previous day and the first day today breaking the high of the previous day. So on the hourly, you can call this, well, I wouldn't call it a clear, You can go, okay, let's, let's take off extended hours to make it more clear. So I would just view this as low of yesterday, high of the bounce was this morning's high. We held the low of yesterday on the pullback and then we broke the high of the day. So that is a confirmed hourly trend change for me. And now the daily bounce is underway. And so yesterday I said, what, 20? At first said 30% easy, and then I brought it back down to 20. But here we are up 30% from the low. So again, it's, it's the timing that's the tricky part. We know it's going to bounce 20, 30% easy. Let's see how much bounce follow through we can get at this point. Any consolidation, the bulls have to hold the hourly higher low, which is a ways away. And the bulls are going for more here after hours. They're going to try and gap it up tomorrow. We'll see if they're successful. Anything above 1855 is an hourly high or low. So you need to determine if you're in this trade, am I going to sit through hourly consolidation the next time it happens? Or if we gap up, am I going to lock it in? And if it's difficult for you to make that decision, you can always do partial positions, sell half on a gap up open, and then try and let the rest of the trade play out. We'll be looking for first five minute oversold conditions from here to be scouting an hourly high or low. And resistance is just going to be the high of every day, 2431. 29. And again, it's just such a wide range. Now we're watching retracement size. How much bounce do we get? This could still be a daily bear flag, even though it's a 30% bounce. These bulls need to get into the 30s if we're going to be creating space for a daily trend change to eventually try and take place.
But again, this is just the scale of tilting. This is just a massive pump and a massive pullback. And eventually, demand outweighs supply again. And that's what took place today. Natural gas. So natural gas, massive move today. Daily bull flag confirming $5 psychological resistance has been tested. We are at seven-year highs. Next resistance is 5512. That would be 11-year highs if we broke that level. So natural gas bulls are still in absolute complete control. We had a weekly bull flag confirm. We had a daily bull flag confirm. We had a monthly trend change. The bull cross of the EMAs. And if you've been watching, I've been covering natural gas very consistently, often. How many times have I looked at this chart? Wow, let's do that math. So pretty much all of 2020 and now all of 2021. So we're talking 21 months and I probably looked at it. We got 52 weeks in a year, 100 times times five days a week. I've looked at this chart 300 times maybe, 250 to 300 times in this time period. I have not traded it once. So got a shout out today from Alex, kind words, and said months ago, I said, look out for natural gas. Know what I'm talking about? Typically stay with blah, 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 blah. So I've been on top of this move as far as anal technically analyzing it very well over the last year plus. And I just want to highlight, I have not made $1 from doing this. And I could look back at that and there's two ways that I can choose to approach this psychologically. It's my choice. I can say, darn, what an idiot. I can't believe I didn't trade this. And I haven't traded it because in 2019, natural gas was my biggest losing trader. And so in 2020, one of my resolutions was I'm not trading natural gas this year. And then that just carried over into 2021 because I didn't have any interest in, in changing things up. And I could be looking at this and saying, I'm so dumb. I can't believe accounting all the missed money I could have had if I did this and this and regret and despair and, and negativity. Or I can look at this and say, wow, I've been pretty dead on on this move. I could have made some money, but maybe if I traded this, I would have not made X amount of dollars that I made trading NIO. Maybe I would have been more distracted. There's no way to go back in time and know how it would have all played out. But the bottom line is, I've said this before, 85% plus of the things that I chart, thousands and thousands of charts, hundreds of hours, I never trade. And that's not wasted time because this massive momentum shift that I've watched take place over the last two years, that's in the memory banks. And I have now analyzed it almost on a daily basis for the entirety of this shift. And that is going to be very useful for me over the next 20 years as I continue trading or however long I stay alive. So I've traded more in 2021 off of monthly charts. I've made more money off of monthly charts than I ever have at any point in my career. I don't even know if I was looking at monthly charts in the first eight years of trading. I probably wasn't. So it's a shift. I'm shifting away. I'm not shifting away from day trading, but I'm shifting my mindset to getting prepared. I'm going to be trading on longer term timeframes more as I get older and as I'm spending less and less time on the computer. And this is just a beautiful lesson that I'm going to take with me. And I will apply the lessons that I learned here and it will make me money further down the road. It just hasn't made me money on this move. So congrats to the bulls that have made money, but there were a lot of lessons in what I just said over the last three minutes. But the biggest one is you choose your psychological state. You have control of that. You have control of what your thoughts are. And whether you choose negativity or positivity has such a ripple impact on everything that follows. Do good things. See you tomorrow. That's that. Thank you.